Och gud mina dag. Hi guys. This is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful, and record hot and a little bit smoky day here in the collapse of everything. Where it is, I think, 83 degrees in uh, upstate New York on this gorgeous Tuesday, October 3rd. And uh, I just did a, just read a story from the New York Times about these damn explosion and the number of satellites ruining our night sky. And, uh, but I just want to touch base over here at my... All my buddies over at medium.com. I all of my all of my friends are over at medium.com today. Good lord. Uh, <laughs> medium.com is is certainly the greatest compository of collapse that I've that I might have ever come across. And today's digest uh, is is a particular treasure trove. All my buddies are here. Uh, Michael Campy's here, and Alan Urban's here, and Indy Cos here, and the uh, what's it? the honest sorcerer, the enigmatic bee is here. And uh, before I get into this, I. I've heard from Vegematic and a couple of other people talking about the paywall at, uh, at medium.com, and I'm a little unclear about this, guys. I have never bumped into a paywall at medium.com in my entire life. I don't know why I don't encounter this same paywall that a lot of other people have and, and it, this is just a just a hunch as I told Vegematic I'm thinking it might be because I write for medium so maybe if you go on the medium and join up as a writer go in there and write one story it'll take you about five minutes publish one story on medium maybe that gets you around the paywall I'm just guessing wildly I have never paid one penny to a paywall in Medium. Never happened to me. But anyway, uh, good luck on all that. Uh, but what, one, one of the recurring themes in, in today and in so many other days is this broken record as every one of us Doomers uh, deal with. I just had a rant on this. I'm not going to do a whole nother rant. Is trying to answer the question when this is going to happen. The when is the what we all know what we're talking about level of shit hitting the fan going to happen? As Alan Urban, uh, I think the title of his. I don't have. I don't have. Was, when is the collapse going to kill me? Face it, this is the question that people want to know. When is the collapse going to kill me? Uh, and nobody knows. I mean, my, Michael Campy, his article today was, was some dystopian fiction, I think from January 1st, 2025, uh, that, that, that it's going to happen between now and you know, over the next 14 months, according to Michael Campy's dystopian fiction. Uh, I think Alan Urban, I think he's gone from 2050 to 2040 to 2030. I've gone from 2070 to 2050 myself. Nobody knows. As, as Alan uh, wrapped up, uh, he's just going to keep his answer the same as it has been my stock answer when anybody asks me when is collapse going to happen the answer is it is already happening we are in the middle of the collapse of global industrial civilization and the collapse of a planet we are well on our way 
Uh, some of us are going to get kicked a little sooner than others. It's coming for you. Uh, just get out there and enjoy it while you still can. Uh, I, I'm not going to tell you it ain't coming for you tomorrow. It will come like a thief in the night. But anyway, so uh, I'm not going to uh, look at B, what B does in his uh, essay. He has it titled, A Sneak Peek into a Post-Industrial World. And he, and, and these, what he does in this essay is take a sneak peek into 2030, 2050, 2070, and 2100. Uh, <coughs> warning, what follows is pure fiction. Sorry, my crystal ball went missing, and thus only one of the many possible future outcomes. So treat it lightly and use it to inform your thinking, not as a definitive prediction. And I'm not going to get into it. I will put the link on here. Hopefully you will not be paywalled out uh, because it, it, all of this trying to second guess what the collapse is going to look like. It depends on where you live uh, and how much money you have, among other things, and a big dollop of luck uh, when the collapse is, is or is not going to kill you and your children and grandchildren. But uh, that is the fictional part of B's story, but I like uh, B's factual lead up. There's nothing fictional about the uh, preamble to the fiction. And while there's really nothing new in here, I really appreciate the honest sorcerer uh, B being able to summarize uh, in, in straight language, what is going on, the setup on this planet, where we are now. And you can do as good a job as anybody trying to take where we are now in 2023 and figuring out where we're going to be in 2030, 2050, 2070, and 2100, as well as B can, or I can. Stop asking other doomers, do you have a brain? Do your own research. Uh, make your own uh, completely worthless prediction. But anyway, where are we now? Which is what I do here at Chronicle of the Collapse. Take it away, B. <clears throat> Our global industrial civilization has arrived at a breaking point. The fundamentals, all the essential inputs to this way of life of ours are crumbling like castles of sand left high and dry. There is no technology ready, readily available to save it, as it was exactly that. Technology and the unsustainable use of resources which has brought us to this state. So, what's there in store for us in the coming decades? A clean, green economy? all powered by wind and solar? Buckle up and join me on a wild ride into the post-industrial future where net zero becomes a reality. You know, and he's talking because civilization crashing is the only way we're going to reach net zero. And when Kansas is going bye-bye, but before we take a deep dive into the future, 
Let's take a look at some basic truths, meaning basic truths of where we are today, shall we? Without a common understanding of the fundamental issues of our time, I argue we stand no chance at making a proper sense of our present predicament, let alone our future prospects. Sure, you can go on denying any of the following statements, <coughs> but so far I have seen no scientific evidence to the contrary other than pure magical thinking per pertaining to how someone, somewhere, will surely come up with something. Hey, don't take my word for it. Do your own research. Look into the fundamentals, then the fundamentals of the fundamentals, and try to come up with a different conclusion. After years <coughs> of research, I cannot, but maybe you can. What I did manage to do while writing this blog, however, is to distill our predicament to its very essence into an elevator style double alt buckshot, if you will. So, without further ado, here is my take on the state of our global civilization. The number one overriding statement, which is really where he could have Wrapped it up, number one, the human species is an absolute overshoot. We consume more resources and release more pollution every year than what could be regenerated or absorbed by nature. Yes, some countries consume and pollute much more than others, but that does not make the fact disappear than even if we all lived like Jamaicans, we would still be living beyond Earth's biophysical limits. And that is just the renewable resources part of the story. Number two, the four pillars of modern civilization Ammonia, which is otherwise known as fertilizer. Ammonia, plastics, steel and concrete, the non-renewable part, all take immense amounts of fossil fuels to make. Currently, there is no way to produce ammonia, a key ingredient in all fertilizers at scale without using natural gas, nor to make plastics without using oil, or to smelt iron without coal, not to mention making cement. Note how fossil fuels are not only sources of energy here, but also key ingredients to these materials themselves providing the necessary hydrogen and carbon atoms, making these wonders of civilization possible. Number three, the best of our non-renewable resources are being depleted fast. Using the low-hanging fruit principle, we harvested the richest, most concentrated, and thus most energy efficient to get deposits first. What remains takes an exponential increase in energy investment to extract and might as well remain buried underground. Resource depletion 
does not mean we are running on empty, but that we are running out of easy to get resources and thus bump into all sorts of limits <coughs> on how <coughs> much we can afford to extract. <coughs> Number four, we are in a chronic transportation fuel shortage, which is expected to grow much worse due to resource depletion. Lower grade ores, deeper oil wells, switching to brown coal, etc., all provide much less value to this civilization while taking up even more diesel to mine and carry around. If you consider how depletion of conventional oil, the ideal feedstock for transportation fuels, ruins diesel supply, let alone its energy economics, you start to appreciate the scale and immediacy of the predicament we are facing. Hmm, a shrinking energy base and an ever-increasing energy demand to get the same amount of stuff. What could possibly go wrong with that? And then number five, which I would have made number two after human overshoot, but coming in at number five on B's list, ecosystems all around the world are in free fall. Even if we saw the energy dilemma tomorrow, this one alone would still put an end to our existence. If we managed to kill 70% of vertebrate land animals, empty the seas, and usher in an insect apocalypse with such a limited energy source, such as fossil fuels? What would we do to the planet with unlimited energy? Strip mine the entire Andes mountain range and search for copper? Convert the entire planet <coughs> into a bare concrete and glass hothouse boiling the oceans just by the waste heat of our activities? The climate is already shifting rapidly without all that. Time to face the truth. The party is over. I could go on listing 20 more predicaments we face, but I think these five are enough to understand that we, Homo sapiens, also are soon to become endangered species. It's very important to note how all of these crises are interrelated and downstream to our civilizational activities. Building, mining, deforesting, tilling, <coughs> burning, etc and are not due to CO2 alone. Climate change is but one of the many symptoms and consequences of overshoot and must be treated as such. Replacing one energy source with another one will not solve the climate predicament let alone eco ecosystems collapse, nor will it alleviate resource depletion. Erasing the biosphere with electrified bulldozers in search for more raw materials and places to expand our cities into, or dispersing a different set of pollutants does not change one thing for the better. Not that this was anyone's grand master plan. 
neither biological nor cultural evolution plans ahead. It just happens. We did all this not because we wanted to have ecocide as an end result, but because we could do it and had a great time doing it. Our unsustainable culture is as much of a result of an evolutionary process as our oversized brains, dexterous hands, or able bodies. Killing the biosphere while burning as much fossil fuels and finite resources as we could was extremely beneficial, you know, to humans on the short term and thus a perfect fit approach in a world of abundance. It also explains why the maximum power principle has such a strong hold over us. The systems that survive in competition are those that develop more power inflow and use it best to meet the needs of survival. Yes, culture can change and sometime rather quickly as we're getting ready to find out. Yeah, but not until push comes to shove, and not necessarily in a way you would call civilized. There is no such thing as a collective psyche or secret cabal of elites informing or enforcing us to do the right thing. We are all part of a complex self-adapting system best summarized by American sociologist C. Wright Mills. Quote, Fate. Fate is shaping history when what happens to us was intended by no one and was the summary outcome of innumerable small decisions about other matters by innumerable people, otherwise known as humans. But anyway, thank you, B, the honest sorcerer, for one more time summing up where we are as a planet look at the fundamentals, the fundamentals behind the fundamentals, and you will reach the only conclusion to be reached, collapse is already happening. There is no way we are turning this freight train around, and you, as well as B or me or Sancho Panza, can play with your little Doomer tea leaves all day long and try to figure out when doomsday is coming for you and your little planet nibbling bundles of joy. Doomsday has arrived, which is why we need to get out there and enjoy this record hot October 3rd in the wildfire smoke, enjoying the beautiful leaves while we still can. Bye guys. Yes, little dog. You ready to go enjoy some chipmunks?